Hello everyone, welcome back to Simplify Studies. In today's module, we will study about the Earth and its motions. As we all know that Earth is spherical in shape and there is an imaginary line that runs through the Earth from top to bottom. This is known as axis. The axis of the Earth is slightly tilted, means it is not vertical. Therefore, the Earth is always inclined on one side while moving around the Sun. This tilt in the Earth's axis is known as inclination, means slightly disposition. The upper end of the axis is called North Pole and the lower end is called the South Pole. Then we have one more imaginary line that runs around the center of the Earth and divides the Earth into two halves. It is called the equator. It divides the Earth into, into Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. The Earth always spins in the same direction around its axis from West to East. This spinning movement of the Earth is called rotation. The Earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. As the Earth rotates, the part of the Earth facing the Sun gets light. So, in these areas we have day, day. The opposite side of the Earth which does not get the Sun's light has night. During the 24 hours, the Earth takes one rotation and every part of the Earth will have day and night. In short, one complete day on Earth is of 24 hours. The Earth spins continuously so we can have continuous cycle of day and night. But have you ever thought what will happen to Earth if it stops rotating even for a minute? Yes, this sudden break will throw all of us directly into the space. Isn't it scary? At times, many of my students, they tell me that they don't think that Earth is actually moving. But it is always moving. It rotates on its axis and at the same time it moves around the sun in its orbit. This movement is called revolution. It takes 365 days and 6 hours to complete one revolution around the sun. This is why a year usually has 365 days. And the 6 extra hours from each year are added. In 4th year, it becomes 24 hours, which is equal to 1 day. Every 4th year, this extra day is added to the year. The year with an extra day is called a leap year. The extra day is added to February. So, in a leap year, February has 29 days. A leap year has 366 days and it comes in every 4 years. A leap year is fully divisible by 4. For example, if you divide 2008 by 4, the remainder you will get is 0. So, it means 2008 is a leap year or 2012 or 2016 etc. Now, let us learn about seasons. The change in seasons from summer to winter and back from winter to summer happens because of two main reasons. The first reason is the tilt of the Earth's axis and the second reason is the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. Now, let me explain you this with a small example. Let us take the example of January. In January, we have shorter days and longer night. Say, a day is of 10 hours and night of 14 hours. But, as we move towards February, there is less difference between days and nights. And by the time we reach March, there comes a day when day and night are equal. It happens on March 21st. It is called Spring Equinox, where the length of the day and night are same in both hemispheres. That means they receive equal amount of solar radiation. Equinox means, equi means equal and nox means night. For better clarity, look at this diagram. 
on 21st uh, March, that is the spring equinox, the sun rays directly fall over the equator. So, the equator receives maximum heat. The angle the angle of the sun decreases as we go towards the poles. But after 21st March, slowly days in northern hemisphere will become longer than nights. That means slowly summer season will start. By the time we reach on 21st June, day will be maximum and night will be minimum. So, 21st June is called summer solstice. Solstice means, sol means sun and stis means maximum or minimum position. For better clarity, look at this diagram. The northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun on 21st June. As the rays of the sun fall directly on the Tropic of Cancer, these areas receive more heat. But, but, the areas to the pole receive less heat due to the slanting rays of the sun. The North Pole is inclined towards the sun and the places beyond the Arctic Circle experience continuous daylight for about 6 months. Since a large area of the northern hemisphere is getting light from the sun, it is summer in the regions north of the equator. The longest day and the shortest night at these places occur on 21st June. But these conditions are reversed in the southern hemisphere at this time. It is winter season. They are having long nights and shorter days. This position of the earth is known as the summer solstice. I hope now you know the reason why in spite of having 6 months of summer, North Pole or South Pole are still very cold. The reason is because they don't get direct sunlight. Very good. Now I have a question for you. Which country is known as the land of midnight sun? I'll be expecting your answers in the comment box. So, let's get back to our topic. We have already finished till 21st June. On 21st June, day was maximum and night was minimum. After this day, again, very slowly, days will become shorter and nights will become longer. It will continue till July and August. Days will be shorter and nights will be longer. And then comes September and again the day will come when day and night will be equal. It happens on 23rd September. So, on 23rd September it is called Autumn Equinox. Equinox means equal nights. It refers to the day which has exactly 12 hours of day and exactly 12 hours of night. 20, 23rd September is called Autumn Equinox. The sun again is on equator, on top of equator. Equator regions receive maximum heat. From this day onwards, Northern Hemisphere is in Autumn Equinox while the Southern Hemisphere is in Spring Equinox. In short, on 21st March and on 23rd September, direct rays of the sun fall on the equator. At this position, neither of the poles are tilted towards the sun. As a result, the entire earth experiences equal day and equal night. This phenomenon is known as equinox. Now let's get back to our topic. We were at 23rd September. From 23rd September onwards, again, very slowly, days will become short and nights will become longer. It will continue till October, November and December. Then, again in December, there comes a day when day is minimum and night is maximum. So, on 22nd December, the daytime in Northern Hemisphere is the shortest day. While in the southern hemisphere, the length of the daytime is the longest day of the year. That is why Christmas is celebrated in summers in Australia because Australia is in southern hemisphere. 
For better clarity, let's see this diagram. See, on 22nd December, the Tropic of Capricorn receives direct rays of the Sun as the South Pole tilts towards it. As the sun rays fall vertically on Tropic of Capricorn, a large portion of the Southern Hemisphere gets light. Hence, the Southern Hemisphere enjoys summer, having longer days and shorter nights. This position of the Earth is called the Winter Solstice. I hope now you have understood how we have seasons. So, we have seasons because of the tilt of Earth's axis and the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. As the Earth goes around the Sun, one season follows another in a continuous cycle. This happens every year. The regular movement of the seasons never changes because the rev revolution of the Earth never changes. In the same way, the rhythm of the day and night remains the same because the earth always takes 24 hours for one rotation. The rhythms of the earth's movements are important for us because our lives are affected by the seasons and by the daily pattern of day and night. Before I end today's session, I want to share something very interesting with you all. Students, do you know what is supernova explosion? Well, scientists say that after supernova explosion, stars came into existence. And as per planetary scientist and stardust expert Dr. Ashley King, he says human body and stars in the sky are made up of the same elements. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> That's all for today. Have a good day.